to be dropped in to the middle of the African savanna. The adrenaline's kicked in already. Every sense is firing. I'm in Rwanda, but my home for the next 10 days will be the remote wetlands and grasslands of Akagera. I want to see if I can thrive alongside this iconic wildlife. I'm dropping into a high plateau with no rations, no survival equipment. I'll be relying on what's around me for all of my needs. The sun already is hot. Here, near the equator, the African midday sun can reach 30 degrees Celsius. The nearest lake is seven kilometers away and two steep hills lie in my path. Walking that distance barefoot in the midday sun without water would be crazy. But maybe there's another option. This whole place is crisscrossed, crisscrossed with, um, with animal paths, which leads me to think that there could be a source of water up here. Looks a little bit like zebra scat. This really is Africa, isn't it? Everything is out there. There's something, something else. Known as the Widowmaker, these mountains of muscle gore and kill over 200 people a year. As we came over, I could see buffalo in that direction. Quite a big herd of buffalo. The senses tell me there'll be a source of water up here. Just keep my eyes so peeled. That's a watering hole. That is a watering hole. That is what I was hoping I would find. And the mud will serve another vital purpose. Just give myself a little bit of protection immediately from the sun. It might crack and flake off, but it's going to create some sort of barrier, isn't it? I've combated my two immediate threats of dehydration and heat stroke. But I still have no protection from the wildlife. Lone older males that have split from the herd are known to be particularly dangerous. First encounter with a buffalo on foot naked ever in my life. The long elephant grass may hide potential dangers, but it allows me to cover myself up, something that always helps me to feel I'm taking control of a new environment. I'm gonna sleep underneath this tree. Obviously, if I base myself somewhere where I've got shade, that's good. And obviously, in terms of escaping from animals, I can escape up into the tree if that's necessary. The other thing, clearly, I would like to do on day one is, um, Let's get a fire going. If I can get a fire going, I'm going to discourage any animals coming towards me at night. I've used this Bushman technique countless times before. Can't get an ember out of it. Got an ember. After nearly an hour, fire at last. Yes! Yes, yes, yes. On night one, I've got myself a fire. And relax, not too much, obviously, because I'm in Africa. Mm -hmm. So if I wasn't by my fire, I have to admit I would be um, very apprehensive at this stage. Definitely. If it charged you, you're pretty much dead. If you run away, you're pretty much dead. The local Bushman guy said to me, 
The buffalo overdose charge you, and you're nowhere near a tree. Lie down on the floor, because it will trample you, and it will break a few bones. But at least there's a possibility you'll live. I'm Ed Stafford, and I've survived my first night alone in the Rwandan savanna. Buffalo in the watering hole. Another buffalo out there. What are you can I wait a bit to go for my uh, <laughs> morning drink? <laughs> but when it comes to the watering hole, I'm learning my place in the pecking order. That's not actually brilliant news, look at that. The buffalo seem to have drank most of this water source. That's nothing more than a, than a very thin puddle now. Robbed of water, my survival priority must now be to find a new supply fast. I need to protect myself from heat stroke and take my fire with me. It's nicely. After six gruelling hours, I'm descending to the lakeside. Tastes amazing. <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty sure that that was a big fish that just flapped. There must be an abundant source of protein in the lake. So with my next trap, I'm hoping to catch fish. I'm making a standard funnel trap a technique used by indigenous cultures all over the globe. I'm going to draw the fish in through this wide opening with bait and trap them in the surrounding shallow reed bed that I'll bolster with mud walls. Once in, they'll struggle to find the narrow escape route. Now, all my hopes for a decent meal hang on my fish trap. Something in here. And finally, after days of waiting, a huge catfish. <laughs> Look at that! Look at the size of it. <laughs> I'm sure there was another one in there. Oh, whoa. <laughs> They're huge. I knew they were there. I just knew they were there. The fish trap works. A brace of catfish. Fish for supper. Fish for supper. They must weigh at least two kilograms each. Now my traps are paying off. At last, I've proven that I can sustain myself here long term. That is what my body needed. Uh, for me, this marks success. And um, suddenly, life isn't about survival. Life is about enjoyment. Oh. <laughs> this meat is incredible. I've just eaten half a fish in a matter of seconds. <clears throat> perfect, perfect way to end the day. And I've seen the most incredible wildlife. I could live here long term. I could survive. But I am so looking forward to some nice food, a hot bath, and going home.